Because some have asked, I'm going to explain the purpose of the Geneva intermittent sprocket. What I have here on my desk is a large scale unlubricated model. Before I show you how it works, let me go into its purpose. I'm more of a computer guy and mechanical things aren't my primary interest, but I work in the entertainment business and as fast as digital technology is taking over, most cinemas in the world still use film projectors running on well-established mechanical techniques. What I have here is a small roll of 35mm film. Just a movie trailer, probably about two and a half minutes long. You can see each of the frames, which run through the projector at 24 frames a second. creating the illusion of motion. On the left, those waveforms that you see there are the analog sound tracks, the left and the right stereo tracks. There's more to the sound, including digital sound tracks and sometimes a time code, but I won't go into that now. The point is, inside the projector, there's an electric motor pulling the film from a big supply reel to a big take-up reel. The problem is that the motor is moving at a smooth and constant speed. The reason that this is a problem is that we need the image to appear to stand still on the cinema screen, like this. So when I was a kid, I saw how a stroboscope worked, and I assumed that's how a movie projector worked. Just have a bright light that flashes quickly as each frame passes through the projector and leave it switched off the rest of the time. That's not how it's done though, because that would be horribly inefficient for two reasons. Firstly, turning a lamp on and off so quickly at so many times a second is extremely taxing on the bulb. It wouldn't stand up to the rigors of two hour movies six times a day. Secondly, because the thing would have to flash so quickly to make it look like the film is standing still, it would effectively be turned off 97% of the time. And that means the cinema is in darkness 97% of the time. In order to make the other 3% bright enough to please the audience, you'd have to use a lamp so bright that, that it would be stupidly inefficient. So much for my stroboscope assumption. They only use those in discos and only for like 30 seconds at a time. No, the problem was solved mechanically long before I was around. The solution was to keep the film dead still for as long as possible. then jerk it suddenly to the next frame and hold it there for as long as possible. Then you just leave the lamp on, stick a spinning disc in front of it, and make sure that the openings in the disc correspond with the times when the film is standing still. When the film advances to the next frame, you block out the light from the lamp so the audience doesn't see that blurry shudder created by this movement. So back to the electric motor. How do we get a smooth sailing electric motor to stand still most of the time, then advance the film very quickly and stand still again for the rest of the time? I suppose you get stepper motors, but that's probably a newer technology and the pioneers of film would have wanted something simple and reliable. After all, the same method was used in the field on their movie cameras. Enter the elegant solution, a gear. Not any gear, mind you. This one has a special design which converts the motor's constant, always turning motor motion into a motion that happens really, an intermittent, hence the name Geneva Intermittent Sprocket. And here's the model. I'm going to turn this model by hand, and you can see the white dot that I put on the flywheel just for the purposes of the demonstration. I turn the wheel constantly, it turns constantly. But, on the other side, you see the sprocket. It kind of looks like an old Nazi iron cross, but different. How does it work? Well, the constantly turning wheel on this side has a single pin in it. As it nears the top of the circle, it engages the sprocket, forcing it to skip very quickly to 90 degrees from where it was. After that the sprocket stops 
and stands around idly while the wheel goes about the business of getting to the next revolution. So you can see here at one revolution per second how the sprocket stands still most of the time while the wheel turns constantly. Now one revolution a second would only get you one frame advance a second so not ideal for persistence of vision. A normal movie runs at 24 frames a second and I can't move quite that fast but I can go fast enough to I illustrate the principle and irritate the neighbors. As I turn the side as fast as I can making a hell of a noise you see the sprocket doing its work and on the other side the shaft above the flywheel is moving intermittently. I've written numbers on each of the four phases because it doesn't have teeth pulling a roll of film past it. Try and focus it a bit better. bit difficult to do this with one hand and a cell phone camera but that's the principle. There are a lot of other considerations such as how the soundtrack moves smoothly while the image is moving intermittently and so on but I think you get the concept of the Geneva intermittent sprockets.